Joining us right now on set is John Hess. He is the CEO of Hess. Also with us, our guest host today, Senator Heidi Heitkamp. And John, thanks so much for being here this Thank morning. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. So uh, tell us a little bit about your logic behind this. You think if we really want to send a message, the way we do it is helping Europe through these exports. Well, the United States, Becky, is an energy powerhouse. We're the number one gas producer uh, in the world, uh, over 90-year supply of natural gas. And we're the number three oil producer in the world, about 55-year uh, supply of oil. And the best way for us to respond to the events in Russia as well as the Mideast is quite simple, to repeal the ban on crude exports. The ban was put on in place in the 70s uh, at a time of the Arab embargo and a shortage. Right now we're in a period of supply strength with a lot of visibility to come. So if we do that, uh, it would go a long way to lowering prices and uh, increasing jobs. And recently Brookings came out with a report uh, that supported that, and and IHS did. Even Tom Friedman, uh, even your Brooklyn. colleague from mm -hmm. New York Times. <laughs> now all you got to do is convince Becky. You got to convince yeah. Becky. Becky's on the other side. Are, are, are okay. No, no. I yeah. will say. She I will wants say to what's happened everything. with Russia. What's happened with Russia has, with Russia has changed stuff stuff my perspective sure. on this. For a long time, I've thought we need to keep it here so we can get off OPEC but, oil. Sure. But but you think about this: we can export gasoline, mm -hmm. but not crude oil. That's right. How does that make sense? I might just That's compliment yeah. the senator and, and, on that. And, and so what, what, what we're really looking at is finding a natural market for a commodity that is globally traded. And if you don't allow the exports of this oil, they're going to reinvest someplace else where they can market their oil. And so it's going to reduce the, the development and the dollars coming in in development in our country. And it's going to have huge consequences in terms of where we are with oil prices globally because we're going to restrict supply instead of, instead of trying to control demand. But the other part of this story that needs to be told is it's not just the United States. We know what Canada, Canada can do. We've seen Mexico now do their historic reforms, both constitutionally. And so North America is going to become the energy powerhouse for the world if we allow them to trade their their. So you're suggesting we come up with our own OPEC right here? Well, well, not OPEC because OPEC was was uh, price controlled. You know, we're going to increase demand or supply to control the price. What I'm saying is that we have an energy hungry world and they're getting their energy from sources that we'd like to say no more like Russia and if we deploy these resources in a smart way will not only help our industry in our state and in in North America but we also will help stabilize uh, Europe uh, let me ask with Europe isn't it a bigger situation where they need natural gas because that's what they're so reliant on Russia for well right? Russia supplies 30% uh, of uh, Europe's gas but they also supply 30% of Russia's uh, Russia supplies 30% of their oil and 30% of their gas okay, I didn't realize so that. the ties are very very strong and the importance of the uh, uh, crude export uh, repeal of the ban is that something we can do right now uh, the LNG or gas that we can export is probably going to take five years before we have the infrastructure in place probably going to cost 40 or 50 billion dollars yeah, huge infrastructure investments yeah. the implications for your business if we did that actually would probably put pressure on prices down yeah. but it'd be the right thing long term in terms of making markets open yeah. It, it, if we can talk about natural gas, because a lot of people are concerned that if we open up natural gas for exports, that's going to dramatically increase the natural gas price. And, and the reality is that it costs so much to offshore that natural gas. The secret here is in order to be competitive in other parts of the world, they need a lower price gas in our country. And so what people don't understand is that seven cents in MCF that it's going to cost to offshore our, our gas. And, and it's not just Europe. We could move this gas to Central America where gas prices are over $20 in MCF. Mm -hmm. So what does that do to the economy down there? There is so much opportunity here to continue the development in our country, continue to build the jobs and, and deploy the resources here, and then do really great things across the world. Yeah, right now prices are so low for natural gas, some of them are just capping wells. It's well, that's right. right. That's and, bad, that's, yeah. and, and that's what, what maybe a lot of my colleagues don't understand. In fact, in a debate recently, I kind of booed about that. I said, look, you artificially deflate and not let the market find its place. You artificially deflate, uh, uh, deflate the price of natural gas. You will reduce production. 
That's right. And they just couldn't quite grasp well, that. All the people in your part, yeah. Sure, you, no, you must, no, that must no, happen. You know, when you, you say hey, colleagues, this you mean... Is, this is oh, not okay. a partisan yeah, yeah. issue. Mm -hmm. You know, what people don't it's realize is the huge issue. investment I know who you're talking to. <laughs> that's going not. into our country in terms of unconventional oil and gas. It's $100 billion a year. So it's a huge investment engine. And it has created about two million jobs. And in our own company, we're spending about, uh, have spent about ten billion dollars over the last five years to build our position in the Bakken yeah, yeah, that the senator and Senator people. Hovind saw with uh, Secretary Moni's firsthand on their tour uh, when they came and saw our people and our operation in August. Uh, that investment uh, has allowed us to increase our production to eighty thousand barrels a day, which should nearly double by 2018. Wow. Uh, we're drilling some of the lowest cost wells. There, that generating some of the highest returns with high productivity. Mm -hmm. That has a lot of visibility going forward for our shareholders. And we've reduced our well costs. You know, talk about the American ingenuity from $13 million four right. years ago to $7 million per well. I mean, it, now. It's all good, Senator, but, but, and, and John, but you know that the, it's going to stay cheap for a long time, too, because we have a lot of it. And it does sort of, well, some people don't like it because it makes wind and solar, it pushes the, the economic prospects of those renewable sources that we spent so much money and we just, we were going to, we decided as a, as a government yeah. that we were going to make yeah. sure that that, and it pushes that way off into the future to get economically competitive with it. Well, and it's clean, but there's some people I, don't I, even care that it's clean. Right? <laughs> I, I would tell you that there is a number of people right now who are building out wind generation because it's a lower cost form of, of generation of electricity. It will find it will find its market. Right, but this put a, a no, lot of that no, stuff no, on hold. What natural gas prices have done is they have squeezed out coal. That the, the double whammy of regulation of coal right. and natural gas prices. No one has coal on the books. You couldn't find money on Wall Street to invest in coal-fired generation because of low natural gas prices, which is the reason why a lot of people right. want to keep low natural gas prices. John, what, pr what price is, if, does crude go that makes it unprofitable to, to drill? I would say uh, people would start cutting back simply for cash flow reasons, uh, another $15 a barrel from where it is now. They would start to temper it. Do you think that happens, John? Uh, if it's prices go down there, yeah. If you have no, do you cash, think you prices do go down $15? I think prices actually have been uh, weakened, probably down 15% since their peak earlier this year because of slowing economic growth in China. Strong in, dollar. In, in, in a strong dollar, Japan, as well as Europe, as well as increasing supply from the United States, a million but barrels demand, a day year on year. The demand continues to rise globally, but slower than slower. before. But look so, at the geopolitical tension, which has had no effect, which is crazy. It, it, it is actually amazing, but it hasn't it's affected oil production you, yet. You could, yeah, but that's been yeah, the offset but, for a while. But you could see, just in speculation in the past, yep. in the 80s and 90s, if there was a disruption in the Mid-East, boom, right. oil yeah. prices yeah. went up. A lot up, of that fast money. A lot of that money. You don't see that. Increase that supply. has changed. Right. A lot of the hedge funds are out. A lot of that right. fast money. That's we, right. We have one stabilized of the oil and gas prices because of supply. Right. And one of the increases in supply in the last month has been Libya, which has been off the market for a year, and they're right. producing about seven or 800,000 barrels a day. Hey, John, but, we got to go. I, you just mentioned hedge funds, so i got to ask it. It's a Hess question. Your whole company has a different board, almost completely uh, turned over in the past, yes. what are we talking, six months now? Since, yes. since, since, how is it different? What decisions well, have you made that are totally different than you would well, have otherwise? Actually, what's very interesting, we have... This is the, pul uh, this is the pulsing early yeah, management. We, we have proxy, some uh, that we made a settlement where we brought some new directors on, some uh, re representing uh, independent interests from Paul Singer, and then some has legacy directors, and I have to say they all bring a lot of skill to the table. Uh, we listen to all our shareholders, and we put in a plan that I think was put in years ago to transform our company to an exploration and production company. We're executing it well, right. and all our shareholders are benefiting from it now. So the company's doing very well. You have a, uh, this is probably your decision, um, you know, any size coffee at the Hess station where I stop every morning is 99 cents. Did you think that up? Did you know that? Uh, well, we want to make sure we keep our customers Any happy. size coffee is 99 cents. I stop at Hess every morning. So do you morning. get the smaller or do you get the large? See, I was smart enough to get the large. And Joe, smart. just so you know, uh, you know, while we're selling our gas stations as part of the transformation to our uh, exploration production business, we're still going to have the Hestoy trucks. It's been a family Thank tradition you. for 30 well, years. They're, they're not just and trucks. They're helicopters, they're, yeah. all kinds That's of stuff. That's right. right. And I get they'll them be sold on the Internet going forward. So yeah. you'll be able to keep we don't people ages happy. They're collectors. Well, that's, but you'll only be able to buy them on the Internet? Yes. You can't buy them going on the This year at the stations, but the in the future on the Internet. These are the important issues. We'd be able to still buy the toys. Thank you. 
Nice. Thank you very much. Big, big John, thanks for coming in.